Hey folks, I'm Tita Hui with Follow the Coin, and we're here at the Stanford Blockchain Workshop, Stanford, California. And this is, of course, Julia Toriansky. Did I get it right? Very good. <laughs> Please explain uh, who you are, what you do, um, and yeah, we want to get to know you better. <laughs> Um, I have a website called BraveTheWorld.com and I guess the best way to describe me is uh, as an anti-state propagandist and I'm very into Bitcoin because I think it's in line with my uh, morality. So what is your morality? I don't believe in centralized, forceful entities that dictate the way that we live. And the blockchain and Bitcoin, which is offered on the blockchain network, is something that allows us to make a choice about how we interact with each other, not only financially, but how we uh, communicate with each other uh, later down the line. Because I think the tech is, it's got more use cases than just being monetary. But when I say that, it's almost a contradiction because you know, economics is human behavior and interaction, so everything is inherently monetary, so it's one and of the same. Right. So, what is anti-status propaganda? I guess I, I'm from Russia, so I'm used to, you know, it, the, the, the classic propaganda machine is very pro-state. So you've got Orbals in uh, Nazi Germany, you've got the, uh, the Soviet, you know, the, the posters and the, even the American posters and propaganda and the, mach the machine that kind of absorbs the communication of the entire country to put out their status quo and it always leads to very bad things and if we could change that and give, give information and the ability to be independent when it comes to monetary transactions which is what interaction revolves around ultimately what fuels it because it gives us incentives it empowers people right no it makes sense you have freedom of choice or yeah, freedom of religion it's all these things the constitution kind of sort of loosely says yeah. you can have but you don't yeah, know because of I hate you. Yeah, I think with something with technology that we can actually use towards the means that we want to use it for without being told how to use it is what will ultimately free us because a piece of paper doesn't have the ability and it can be misinterpreted. Uh, but you know, the good space right now is very. I mean, I think it's being derailed. I think the original ethos of Bitcoin, which is very Austrian school and very freedom, uh, pro-freedom, is being derailed. And that's not only via regulation, but via the corporate world, the startup world, because ultimately most corporate uh, entities, uh, their end goal is to make money and to... Uh, to to make more money, you often have to, the best way to make more money, you often have to comply with regu regulatory bodies, which, you know, the government and the corporate world fuses into a single entity with a single goal, whether they realize it or not. So, I mean, I'm, I'm very worried about the space. How do you find it uh, avoidable? It's like kind of unavoidable. Like, right. In order for right. it to be seen as legitimate, because we're we'll we'll yeah, we're born into the structure, and how do we circumvent that structure? Even we're having these tools now, and we're still falling into the same exact thing that we've seen over and over again. We know it doesn't work. We know it always leads to violence. We know it leads to trading off freedoms for other hypotheticals, and we still do it over and over again. And I find that the space is falling victim to this because of our uh, voluntary actions. How do you find a solution towards making sure there's still kind of a free form Bitcoin world? There is a community, the community is still small Bitcoin. And if people hold companies uh, responsible for kind of perpetrating immorality and uh, a ground of ethics that they will follow first and foremost above everything else. If they have an audience and a community that holds them to that, that is the only way we can do it. And I don't, you know, right now 21 came out, you know, Peter Thiel and all these big guys, they got a crazy amount of funding. Oh cool, what's this going to do for the space? 
I am very certain that they have absolutely no moral qualms in trying to monopolize the space. And Peter Thiel, in his book, talks about, he claims to be a libertarian, he talks about um, natural monopolies and how they can be great. And the best way to do it is to find a niche market. Another way to do it is of course by providing a, a better service than everyone else but he speaks very much in favor of them but you know what, how else you do it you get a, you use your connections and you get everybody to give you money you get crazy investment you raise how i don't know how many 15 100 they raise a lot of they raise more money than anyone in the space and you use that to your advantage once the technology is young you use it because you're the most powerful entity in that space that's how you get a monopoly and i think that's what they want to do they want to use their uh, power towards making the most money and being most influential in the space and if they think that they're gonna have a moral ground for that i don't think so because peter thiel supports politics right well playing devil's advocate okay can it be argued that everybody who is in Bitcoin is interested in money and hence a capitalist? No, that's great. I'm a capitalist. Um, but I think if you, that's not being a capitalist isn't inherently negative. You just don't like the yeah. monopolistic. Yeah, be, being a capitalist isn't inherently pro-government. I am anti-government. I am pro-capital. Now, when capital is dependent on submitting to government and submitting to regulation or stepping on everybody else because they got ahead by doing that already, that is not a free market system, right? That well, is not the same thing. So you're pro-collaboration, but anti-monopoly, right? I, yeah, mono monopoly, national monopolies happen because they offer the greatest from a natural monopoly, uh, if 21, uh, you know, just hypothetically, because they raise the most money, that's not a national monopoly. They raise the most money because those, company, those companies were with the government and they grew and bloated because of those relationships. That's not a national monopoly. That's not a free monopoly. That is using your advantage of success because of an immoral. If you're working with the government, it's immoral because government takes money. If you're supported by government, you are supported by government. So if you could build an ideal world, what would it look like? Well, I guess I'll, I'll, that's a huge question, so I'll, I'll stay in the big point of Bitcoin. Um, Bitcoin is supposed to be decentralized, and I know that has scalability issues, but I think we have to deal with that if we want to keep it decentralized, because that is the difference between Bitcoin and other monetary platforms, right? And uh, again, not purely monetary, but I already covered that. Um, it is, you can't have a monopoly. You have my you can't have a monopoly. And that's been up to that. We've been talking about that. We've been talking about this. This is a fear that everyone has. So I've been, there's positive things. You know, when it almost happened, people pulled together and, you know, went against it. And there's like, this one talking about the community is still kind of inherently aligned with what the group is supposed to be. When that community switches gears and we get the more mass adoption and they don't give a crap about anything that I've just said, we're gonna go into any direction that this free market puts us into. But it's not a free market, so this is the danger. We need to continue to have these discussions. If it's a new tech, we shouldn't let it uh, be bolded into an atmosphere that is ancient and doesn't work. And that is what's happening. So we need to pay attention to people who are speaking about things that make sense. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. And I know we're trying to keep this brief. However, tell us about Brave the World. Um, so it's a plan words from Brave New World because uh, Huxley predicted this environment that we are living in today, this brave new world. Let's not succumb to that. Let's brave the world and do something that's not that. No, I like your shows. They're very, very uh, passionate and you've always yeah. got a very good perspective and it makes you kind of think about the topics that you're talking on. Follow me at Brave the World <laughs> and uh, I have a YouTube channel, of course, but the easiest way is just go to bravetheworld.com. That's all I'm I think you're one of the more important voices in this So thanks for staying around and braving the world. Thank with you us. very much. I'll continue. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>